Hello everyone, welcome to AI Anytime channel. In this video, we're going to look at context caching. Context caching is a feature that allows you to cache input tokens. Basically, that helps you, you know, reduce cost and latency. And this feature is available on Google's model. It is also available in other models, but there you, it's not available out of the box. You need to uh, do it yourself, right? You have to find a workaround and use different types of caching algorithms to work with that. But Google provide this out of the box in their models, Gemini 1.5 Pro and Gemini 1.5 Flash. So we're going to see how we are going to use context caching uh, when you have long context. For example, you have a five minutes video and you want to retrieve information from that video. So your input tokens will be too big, too large, because then you have to use a transcription model and get the uh, text out of that video first. And then you have the frames that also has the pixels value, you know, the tiles that's, that we call it, the, the, the way we calculate tokens for the images or the frames. So context becomes too large or too long and that's where these kind of you know uh, techniques are really helpful and one of those techniques are context caching that is available with Gem in gemini models that's what we're going to look at here you know you can store uh, a token in the cache it has some ttl basically you know cache duration for the token and it also had some cost associated with it and we'll see how we can you know uh, also look at that part so let's jump in and see how we can build this guy so here you can see i'm installing pip install and you have to upgrade this so if you just do pip install google generative ai you will not be able to use context caching because it's a very new feature in gemini model you have to up, uh, upgrade uh, the library and you can see you have to restart sessions because by default uh, that's not the one and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to import everything that i need so i'm going to import google uh george generative ai as gen ai that's what we know and then import os from google.colab import i'm going to use user data because my credentials are stored here in the left hand side that you see something called secrets in secrets i have all my keys you can see google api keys hf token open ai api key surper you can keep on listing keys over here now i'm just gonna bring up here and i also need time so import time and these are the imports for now that I need. And then the next thing is os.invan. And here you just define Google API key, user data dot get, it will be get here. And probably you don't also need that, you can directly configure it. So I'm just showing you both the ways you can do it, Google API key. And what you can also do, you can also, if you don't want to do like this, you can also do this. So you can just do genai.configure. And in this configure, you can pass your API key, which is os.invan, Google API, uh, key whatever constant that you have defined in the secrets now the next thing is sorry guys i'm a bit down uh, with sore throat uh, so please hit just that now i'm going to define my video file here so i'm going to do video file name and my file name is nothing but i have an interview of sam altman you can see i have uploaded this here uh, mp4 and i'm going to pass this video here so let's just do that sam dot mp4 and now i'm going to build a information discovery system or a chat bot or a rag system whatever you call it powered by agents or however possible i want to build a system where i can upload these video files and start retrieving information and that's where i want to use context caching so let me show you that how how you can do that now the next is you have to first process this so let's do it so video file and then you want to pass this uh you have to first upload this on that server so gen ai and then you just do dot upload file it has a class called upload file and then you pass the video file name now this these are a bit tricky sometimes due to traffic in the queue it might give you a protocol error but you have to keep trying it so what i'm going to do is while video file while video file dot yes dot unless you status i'll just say um mm, state so while video file dot state dot name and i'm gonna see if that is processing so i'm gonna say processing and here i'm gonna then just do enter and i'm going to give a 
let's just do like waiting just to keep the statuses it print the status message waiting for video to be processed and then i'm give her one second like very two less okay i'm gonna give it two and then i'm going to use get file so you have a class here in this uh function here in this class gen ai dot um, get it should be get file so let's see all yeah here it is so get file and then you pass the video file dot not id you're gonna pass the name here so video file dot name now this is done and then let's come out of this while loop otherwise we'll keep on printing i'm gonna do video file dot uh, not let's let's do it a bit better way i'm gonna say video processed and then you can just uh give it the url you can check that url as well so it also provides you that from because it, it happens on a server right so you can just define the url not url it should be it should be uri the indicator yes and you can see it says waiting for video to be processed and the video has been processed and it's on this google api everything happens on google console of course guys so you know this is how you can first upload the file and now we are going to use a feature okay of that so and you can use in both the google models 1.5 pro and 1.5 flash as well so i'm going to write now cache so it's it's really appropriate guys when in initial context is referenced repeatedly you know by sort request if you're asking same questions again and again but make sure the data is not changing dynamically if your data is static because these files are static you know i'm not going to edit the video anymore but when you have new data coming in the real time then cache is not the good idea right but you can also do a job scheduler or a cron job to kind of update the databases in that case as well so with caching you have to be really careful you know the way you design your system so this is also helpful as i said the chat chatbots with long system instructions repetitive analysis of long video files and you know periodic queries against large doc document they all sets frequent code repository uh, you have bug fixing blah 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 so all of these huge cases that you see where you have a long system instructions very repetitive analysis of videos then you then you can use context caching because you're going to use uh, you're going to reduce the latency and cost so let's see how we can do it so it's cache and this is available on uh, documentation if you read it caching dot uh it and it's as i said right it's a new thing so probably you have to see how you can if you are getting any error you have to upgrade so cached content so i'm gonna do cache content caching dot cached content okay i think i've not the reason i'm not getting the this one because i'm not importing anything let's import so i'm gonna do from because we have to import the caching thingy so from google dot generative ai google dot generative ai i'm gonna import caching here caching and I also need date time, so let's gonna get date time here. And you can see now I am good. So I'm just gonna do again caching dot cached content. You can see it's showing me now. I'm gonna have a create function, and I inside the create, I'm gonna have my model. So the model name I already told you that I'm gonna use models from models. I'm gonna use Gemini Flash model. So this is how you can write it: Gemini 1.5 and then just write here flash and then the first version so 0 0.01 this is the model i'm using you can have a display name and you can get these logs on the uh, generative ai console of google gemini and here i'm going to write ai anytime uh like demo or something video whatever you name it okay that's fine and then you're going to give a system instruction here so let's just give a system instruction in the system instruction i'm writing you are an expert in you are an expert you are an expert video analyzer and your task is to uh, answer uh, users query based on the video file based on the video file attached to it so you can just do that uh, a video file you have access to so i'm going to say video file you have access to and then okay i have to give that and now we are good with system instructions so let me just system instruction is file and then you pass the content as contents 
it says content so it's a list guys you can pass n number of uh, files here so i'm gonna write video file which is again a list and inside the video file i'm gonna have a ttl ttl is again where you set the time you know for that token the content uh, to get expired and i'm gonna say five minutes so i'm gonna say date time dot time delta and you can see it says days but i'm gonna keep this in minutes but if you are building up a, a system in production then you have to be very careful with these numbers i'm gonna say for five minutes you delete my context okay or the cache now this is my cache thingy okay and i'm gonna just run this and see what happens takes a bit of time guys you know so model display name is fine system instruction and uh, I'm, I'm just gonna print my cache here so it will give you uh, you can see here total token count this is the uh, value and I'll talk about these values and once I print the metadata you will see it and you can see create time you can see update time and you can see expire time and you have this name cache contents that's where it's saved so if you look at this number this is an unique identifier for your files or your interaction that you're going to have it so uh, all users will have not even all users even if you want to create a different session or on a different instance this will have a new unique identifier so this unique identifier is assigned to this one uh, this display name blah 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 and then I'm gonna use my model thingy here so model gen AI dot generative AI so let me just do generative model by the way and that from cached and there's that's where we have to use that from cached and you have cached content so I'm gonna use yes you can see it here from cached contents and then I'm gonna pass my cached content so let me just pass my cached content and these contents are nothing but these are my cache this is what i'm going to pass here and you can see we are good and now i'm gonna let's also print model okay so if you look at here it gives you you can also pass safety settings you know you have some you can do content moderation on the fly here if you have explicit and i'll show that you will see everything uh, in, in a bit and then i'm going to ask a question so let me just do a response thingy and i'm going to do model dot generate content and inside this generate content and here i'm going to pass and this it's a list so you can pass n number of question let me just ask this question what is this video all about so if you are interested i can show you this video so this is the video that you've worked incredibly hard and i know that a lot of the people around you have worked very hard uh what's by the way this guy is a brother of sam altman that's called jack altman he's a ceo of lutis you can see here okay so sort of the advice or the way that you think about your work-life balance in your 20s and what do you recommend to people who want to do these things and also want to you know experience their 20s well i don't think i work as hard as a lot of people i think i do work pretty hard, but I think it's compound interest is a good metaphor here. If you work really hard at the beginning of your career and you get a little bit better at what you do every day. So that's the video that I you know, uploaded and I'm asking this question, model.generate generate content, what is this video all about? And I'm expecting some kind of response and then I will print the metadata, I will print the output and we'll see like a bunch of things over here. Okay, so let's do that and so guys, the minimum number of input tokens for context caching is 32,000 or something. Read that on documentation and the maximum is same as the maximum for the specified model like Gemini 1.5, like the whatever I have. So uh, by default, if you don't set a TTL, which is a cache reten retention time, by default, it is one hour and uh, the model does not distinguish uh, between cached and normal tokens. So cache content is simply prefixed to the prompt. So if you have a prompt template, it will be prefixed. So the cache service provides a delete operation to manually delete as well. You can go there and you can manually delete it. So I'll, I'll recommend to have a paid version if you want to use uh, context caching with Gemini model. You know, in paid version, they have better functionalities that use standard rate limits, blah, blah, blah. Now I'm just let's just put response here. So here in response, let me make this a bit bigger so you can see it. Can okay, I just get rid of this guy here? Now you can see it says this video is an interview between Jack Altman, CEO of Lattice, and Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI. They discuss the importance of working hard in your 20s. And I mean something you know, I have to go this side here. Okay, so importance of working hard in your 20s and setting the trajectory of your career early on sam advises to work harder than most people think you should and to make decisions based on internal factors rather than external pressures he also emphasizes the importance of finding a deeper mission and enjoying what you do as well as working with people you like so he has given you a text and if you look at this category 
you know it has safety ratings so all the probability probabilities are negligible for this question because there is nothing explicit that you should do a moderation on and then you have metadata let me print out the metadata so you can read it so you can just do print and then you can pass response dot uj's excuse me response dot user metadata and when you print it it'll find out prompt token count like 77,326 uh, candidates token count 92 total token count 77,418 and cached content so you can look at look at the cached content token guys so next time if you keep asking the same question on the same file your context will be cached okay this is fantastic you can save a lot of money on this to be honest when you go into production and if you uh, have to build a better you have to think of a better system design for your gen ai systems then these are the things that you should focus on guys so this is fantastic i really loved it okay and yeah and you can get get off you can get off this text and all you can parse this text as well to get that but this is what I wanted to do, show you in this video how you can use context caching. You can look at the UGS metadata here. Look at the just two number guys, total token count and cached content token count. It kind of does all the heavy lifting for you when you are building a system where you have to kind, you know, deal with a lot of long context, repetitive context, so on and so forth. So this is important. Uh, and let me know if you have any questions. I'll give this notebook on my GitHub repository. Find the link in descriptions. Uh, if you have any question thoughts feedbacks, please let me know in the comment box You can also reach out to me through my social media channel guys find those information on channel banner and channel about us Guys, we also have launched our discord server the community on discord, which is growing really fast We help you if you are a Gen AI enthusiast or if you are a beginner in this field You want to learn quickly you want to do freelancing you want to work on some side gigs You want to organize and participate in hackathons and you want to you know uh, share knowledge with the community learn and also partner with us sponsor us do whatever you want to do join the discord guys and it's growing really fast and we're getting some good support we're also doing some cutting edge research we have formed a research unit within the community and these guys are you know working on some research paper right now they're writing something so if you have any interest find those uh discord links in my description as well of this video and if you like the content i'm creating please hit the like icon and if you haven't subscribed the channel yet please do subscribe the channel guy that motivates me to create more such videos in your future thank you so much for watching see you in the next one